so she had three acres of a garden. I'm Randy Lewis, and I am a dairy farmer in Alamance County. Eli Whitney, North Carolina, as a matter of fact. Randy Lewis has been a dairy farmer all of his life. He's the fifth generation to farm his family's land. When you're poor, you become all kinds of things. And, and uh, I, I, I have a saying that many is the time I wish I'd have been born rich instead of so good looking. I could have done a whole lot more with the money. When other kids grew, growing up wanted to be doctors and lawyers and stuff, all I ever wanted to do was milk cow. That's all I have ever really wanted to do. In the mid-2000s, business was good. Randy said he was pretty close to being debt-free. And then 2009 hit, and um, the price of milk bottomed out, and feed went up, fertilizer went up, fuel went up, everything went up, and I probably lost $80,000. That was money we had that's gone. And then we've had to borrow some money since then. So all in all, if you get right down to it, we probably lost close to $150,000 in the last, since 09. We finally got their hemorrhage and stopped, but it took a while. Most dairies send raw milk in a tanker truck to a processor, but a handful are trying something new as a way to increase revenue. They're bottling milk right on the farm. It cuts out the middleman and the farmer makes more money. To do that though, the dairy needs startup funds for a pristine pasteurizing space and a huge refrigerator. Randy began to raise money with his niece, Megan. She loved her cows, her cows were her first love. She loved working with the kids and wanted to see, you know, the dairy industry stay alive in North Carolina. That was one of her, her biggest goals. She realized going through 4-H um, dairy judging and dairy skill that there were less and less farms every year, and she took note of that. Randy and Megan wrote a grant and crossed their fingers. But Megan was killed in a car accident. She was on her way to the hospital to have her baby. She had worked here with me since she was just a baby, and that just, uh, I, you know, I don't have any children myself, so my two nieces are my kids, pretty much. And so losing her was, was it was hard. For, it was hard for everybody. I mean, my, I'm no different than anybody else in our family or anybody else that's lost a child. It's just a hard thing to go through. Megan died in 2012. Randy was filled with grief, and at the same time, he was under intense pressure. The dairy was about to go under. As crazy as it sounds, I turned that grant proposal in, and I just I left it up to, to to whoever the powers be. If I got the grant, then I figured I'd, I'd I'd go through with this bottling project and figure out how to make it work. And if I didn't get the grant, I was going to sell the cows and quit. It was either you know, it was either find some other way to you know to make money or quit. The grant came through a year later for eight thousand dollars. Randy bought equipment and a refrigerated tractor trailer truck body. The whole operation fits inside that trailer. The staff includes Randy's mother, along with Megan's family and friends. The process still starts with the cows. Megan's sister, Michaela, does the milking. Dip your teeth. Michaela extracts about 400 gallons of milk a day. Inside, the equipment is cleaned meticulously. Rocking it, rocking your hair net. Yeah. They need to make adult-sized beard guards, too, you know. Oh, it's a beard guard? Yeah. My beard fits in it pretty good right now, but by spring it won't. The milk is piped into a big vat. It's heated and quickly cooled. The milk is pasteurized, but not homogenized, so the cream rises to the top the old-fashioned way. Right now we have to calibrate this machine. Each batch must meet strict requirements. The milk is bottled, then labeled, and distributed to places like Weaver Street Market in Carborough. Of the 150 dairy farmers in the state, five, only five, well now six, process the milk right here on the farm. T tell me your name and how old you are. Michaela Mann and I'm 17. Michaela works incredibly hard for her uncle, a man she calls Unky. I'm used to it by now. I've been feeding calves like this since I was old enough to stand, following Unky around. So it's like an everyday thing for me. How about the whole bottling of the milk and trying to... That's new, that's scary. Why? I feel like I have to do so much right on my end for their end to work out. Like I have to make the cows make enough milk. Even so, Michaela knows that bottling milk right on the farm may help save the dairy and the land and their way of life. 
The project is her sister Megan's legacy. She was all gung-ho on making milk, and I was kind of just into whatever she was into because I was a little sister. So I guess I got gung-ho on it. And then when she died, I felt like I had to keep it going because she would have wanted that. So I spend more time here than I guess I should as a teenager, but I do anyway. I've never been proud of too much I've done in my life, but I'm kind of proud of this because it is working. I mean, and there's a lot of people that were very skeptical that we could get it done to start with. Most of them come here and I could push some of them over with a feather because they swarping down. We'd never get this thing running. And you know, we, we ship milk every week.